I'm here with Shai. Hi, Shai. How are you doing? How are you doing? Excellent. Always good to be with you. <laughs> Thank you. So what's happening in Davos this year? How do you feel about it? Oh, you're happening in Davos. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Shai. So, Luak 2.0. <laughs> So, you're leading an environment task force with uh, young global leaders, right? Yeah, I'm part of the uh, environmental task force. We're doing some uh, really great things as uh, young global leaders because we, we need to take a broader view than uh, we have a longer horizon. So, it's not just about business, World Economic Forum? Oh, no, for us, it's, uh, it's biz obviously you come for business, but you also come to do uh, better things and bigger things in the world. And so, we're, uh, we're launching today the, uh, the Love Movement. Uh, which is a, uh, a big event where uh, we're calling on all the top 1,000 brands in the world to actually um, leverage their power and, and communicate about um, clean, um, clean green world and why it's good for them and good for their businesses. So what do you ask them to communicate about? Oh, we're showing them if they actually communicate about uh, what they do and why green is important, why climate change is a big factor to their uh, consumers. Um, it will be good for their brands, and so we're uh, we're trying to educate them so that they can educate the masses. So, how do you convince them to put some advertising money or other marketing money into communicating around the environment? Because there are no, I mean, how can you show them they have results? And what you show them is uh, is how companies who have actually done that before are making a lot of money. So we're showing them that green is actually green; it actually pays. And uh, we got a lot of great uh, case studies from uh, from companies from all walks of life. To, you know, Toyota, which we all know, Intel, others. Give me one of our two examples. Oh, of real, real concrete cases which work. You know, Toyota picked up uh, on hybrid technology just as everybody else was walking away from uh, from efficient cars. And you know, you had to wait for six months to get a Toyota Prius. Um, you look at Intel, which uh, which when it comes in and builds a uh, a factory, actually uh, makes sure that it does not damage the environment as it comes in. Um, paid back wonderfully for uh, for Intel, GE, which decided to go green. GE, you know, everybody looked at GE as the evil GE, and you see what happened when GE went green. Um, their profits went up, and everything was uh, was fantastic for them. So we're showing them some of these case studies. We're also bringing in some uh, some nice celebrities. We're going to have uh, uh, all walks of life celebrities. So Shimon Paris is actually going to speak today about the roles of business versus role of politicians. And uh, on the other hand, Claudia Schiffer is talking about what is uh, what does it mean to uh, to be green. Um, and, and we hope that these voices actually educate the, um, the, the CEOs and the chief marketing officers uh, to put their, uh, their names behind green. How do you, you, you think the, the public now, the, the people, will change their habits, not only the companies? Yeah, I think people need to, uh, you, you know, to go through the same shift that we've gone with uh, what we bring into our own bodies. You know, we, 10 years ago we didn't care. Now we read the labels what's inside the products we put into our bodies. We have to think about this global body, our, our planet, as, uh, as the same, in the same way. We need to think about, when I use this product, what do I put into the planet? And what is the impact? What's the footprint that I'm leaving behind? And I think that's what we're trying to educate them. You, you leave a footprint behind, even if it doesn't go into your body, it will come back to you or your next generation if you don't do something today. What's your other agenda topics? Uh, what are your other agenda topics in Davos this year? Uh, so, you know, obviously as, uh, as part of SAP, we're always uh, interacting with partners and with customers around here. So this is, uh, it's been a, a great opportunity to meet with, uh, with a lot of our, uh, our ecosystem. And SAP has opened up uh, as a platform, so there's a lot of, of interaction that goes on in Davos. Also, we're uh, in, in YGL. We're uh, just in, in a, at SAP. So, what, what are you focusing about? What, what, when you wake up in the morning, what is your main focus for the company for 07? So, so we've you know we've been through an interesting transformation. SAP has opened up over the last three four years. We we brought in open technologies. We've uh, uh, we've you know we're we're now one of the leaders in the Java world. We're uh, we're one of the, the leaders in web services and, and standards and pushing standards across the, uh, the industry. Um, we've opened up to about 1,500 small software developers to build uh, their, their companies around us. We have uh, a network on, uh, on the net, an SAP developer network, sdn.sap.com, 750,000 developers. Is that all? Uh, you know, in two years, that's what we could do. Um, so it's it's been uh, it's been an interesting ride to actually get a uh, an open SAP versus the uh, the old SAP. So how about SAP and globalization? When you're saying 750,000 developers, how many are in developing countries? How many are in developed countries? So so the interesting thing is we we're uh, giving them what we call contribution points when they generate content on our uh, community site. They get points in orders of about five, ten points for every contribution they make. Um, and you can see the uh, the guys in India and the guys in China and the guys in, in all over the world are actually now at 20,000 points a year. 
and we're, we're I'm trying to find the first one that will get to 20,000 points and still get married or get a child that year because I believe they don't have a life anymore. They just live on this community site. So how, but what what percentage is in India now? Oh, there's no doubt. I mean, the the, the top 10 are uh, are in in India. The, the the largest companies are you know Wipro's, Infosys, uh, Tata, T T C S, T T. Tata. So you have a campus there. Uh, we, have huge, we have a huge campus in uh, in Bangalore. We just started our second campus in India. We have a big campus in uh, in Shanghai. Uh, so it's it's happening all over the world, and and the emerging countries are definitely. So how do you, you travel uh, that much, and you ma you manage all those countries? How do you see the world evolving with globalization? I guess you you also believe in the world is flat, but do do do, do you think we'll uh, reach Africa soon? I think Africa is an interesting challenge. What we're seeing is, uh, you know, I, I'm very encouraged with what I see in South Africa, for example, um, where uh, they've realized that there's a great opportunity to take the, the young generation, bring them in. They've, they've got this uh, this open university where they actually teach them how to uh, implement SAP and how to take those skills to the rest of the world. And I hope that what we see is a sort of a microcosm in South Africa then expands to the rest of Africa because I, I have a lot of hope for Africa. Thanks, Shay. I'll let you walk. Thank you very much. Good luck.